Hello, this is Garrett Chobi, and today we will be showing a video of a nasal floor free mucosal graft for cellar reconstruction. This is following the resection of a non-functional pituitary macroadenoma with a mild to moderate CSF leak in surgery through the cellar diaphragm. At the beginning of the video here, you can see the tail end of the pituitary tumor resection examining the cellar defect with the normal gland just there. There was a, as I mentioned earlier, a mild to moderate uh, weepage of CSF th through the diaphragm. Here we are putting a piece of gel foam in through the dural defect into uh, the area where the pituitary tumor was resected from. This is a fairly standard pituitary approach for us. Then here we are in the right nasal cavity examining the right inferior meatus in order to prepare a uh, harvest of a right nasal floor free mucosal graft. We harvest these fairly widely and use them quite commonly. Here we are uh, making a posterior incision at the junction of the hard and soft palates with a needle tip bovie cautery on a setting of 15. With that needle tip turned approximately uh, 90 degrees, I uh, usually do that with a uh, needle driver. The key part there is palpating that soft hard palate junction, making sure that you're on the hard palate. On the lateral portion of the inferior meatus, we're up high on the wall there to make this quite, uh, quite wide. We do make sure that we stay just inferior to the nasal lacrimal duct in Hasner's valve to ensure we don't cause any uh, epiphora postoperatively. It can be fairly challenging to work in the inferior meatus and visualization can be tough as the inferior turbinate is always sort of hanging in your camera. But the key thing is to use a uh, suction to evacuate smoke as you go, then make those incisions clean down to the bone. Here we are with a curette, just making sure all the edges of the graft are uh, cut through with our neotip bobby cautery. That uh, is much easier to do now than at the end once you have this mostly mobilized. You can see it's just cutting right through the last bit of the periosteum there along the lateral wall and here on the uh, nasal floor. Then once all those edges are released, I then tend to use a suction elevator like this suction freer in order to dissect the mucosa off the nasal floor and inferior meatus in a sub mucoperiosteal plane. I do like to keep the periosteum intact to make this a more robust graft. As you can see here, it's a little bit easier to work circumferentially towards the middle, at least initially, uh, to make sure those edges are all uh, nicely released, rather than simply going from front to back and you can get stuck in the back and have a hard time visualizing it. Once most of the edges are released, then it's uh, fairly straightforward to go ahead and elevate this uh, towards the posterior aspect. And then uh, what you'll see coming in here is a pediatric Blakesley forceps. We will use a grasp the anterior part of this. We want to make sure we keep this oriented properly from the mucosa side from the periosteal side. So once it's out, I mark this mucosal surface with a marking pen. Then here I bring it back into the nose. Previously, all the mucosa has been removed from around the cell, which is really important to have a nice exposed bone and dura for this to adhere to. Once this is in place, we'll carefully position this and unfurl the edges. As you can see, this can reconstruct the entirety of the cella, including, if you like, the clival recess and potentially onto the planum. So it is a very nice, large graft, uh, which has great coverage. Then here we are placing some surgicel, uh, sort of in a picture frame fashion around the edges, as you can see here, to stick that uh, edge of the graft down to the exposed bone, uh, circumferentially 360 degrees around the defect. After the surgicel is placed, I tend to put one piece of gel foam directly in the middle of the graft to have a nice app position and a little bit of pressure. And then I tend to use tissue glue, as you can see here, come in uh, to glue down the edges of the graft as well. Once that tissue glue is placed, I will put a single layer of gel foam over top of the glue. This allows me to have a barrier when I debride the patient between additional packing material, which will be debrided at the first visit, and a gel foam, which I tend to leave in place at the first debridement to ensure I don't pre, uh, preemptively or, or accidentally remove the graft itself. So there's the gel foam going in, and then you'll see come in uh, in just a minute here, additional resorbable packing material, which of course then I'll be able to debride uh, at their post-operative visit. This is an endoscopic image at the time of debridement, and you can see how remarkably well and quickly the nasal floor heals following this graft. In regards to key points, the key points for a nasal floor free mucosal graft are, first of all, 
to harvest it widely along the nasal floor, including the mucosa of the inferior meatus. This allows for a large, robust graft, which can cover the cella, the clavo recess, and potentially to the planum. The second key point is to make sure the graft has excellent apposition to expose bone and dura 360 degrees around the defect in order to allow adherence to the underlying tissue. The third major point or benefit of a free mucosal graft is that the donor site heals remarkably well. It tends to have a nice uh, moisturized environment from the inferior turbinate and heals much quicker with less morbidity than a traditional nasal septal flap. It is of course best used for cellar defects with low to moderate CSF leaks. In larger defects, skull base defects, or high flow leaks, we are of course typically still using vascularized reconstructive options.